section number 26 of stories and pictures this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by linda marie nielsen bellevue washington stories and pictures by i l peretz translated by helena frank section twenty six travel pictures the rabbi of tishowitz no one who has not seen the rabbi of tishowitz's dressing gown would ever know the reason why the rebidson his third wife though hardly middle age already wears a large pair of spectacles on her nose the dressing gown looks as if it were simply made of patches if only complains the rabbi the town would give me another two gulden a week i could get along also is gore bitter but i shall get my way their lawsuits they can decide without me when it is a question of pots and pans any school teacher will do questions regarding women of course cannot be put off and yet i shall get my way i am only waiting for the election of the elders they can't have an election without a rabbi imagine a town no evil eye a metropolis in israel without elders and if that won't do it i shall refuse to try the slaughtering knives i've got them fast enough it was no easy matter to divert the rabbi's thoughts from his own grievances but on the maskil's promising to do his utmost to induce the community to raise his salary he begged us to be seated and listen to our tale nonsense he said i know you tell the fools i know you they run away with me at they run away why should they run away who runs away after what well as you say they run away i will go out with you myself in what will you go calls out a woman's voice from behind the stove give me my cloak answers the rabbi give you your cloak i've this minute taken it apart well says the rabbi this misfortune is happily not great we will go to-morrow i give him to understand that it is only noon that i should be sorry to waste the day new what shall i do answers the rabbi and folds his hands the rebbitson has just started mending my cloak call them in here call them it's easy enough to call them but who will come are they likely to listen to me perhaps i'd better go in my dressing gown it wouldn't do rabbi exclaimed the maskil the inspector is going about in the gas for my part said the rabbi i would have gone but if you say no no it is settled that we shall all three call the people together from the window but opening the window is no such easy matter it hasn't been open for about fifteen years the panes are cracked with the sun the putty dried up the window shakes at every step on the floor the frame is worm-eaten and only rust keeps it fastened to the wall it is just a chance if there are hinges and yet we succeeded we opened the first one side and then the other without doing any damage the rabbi stood in the center i and the maskil on either side of him and we all three began to call out the market was full of people in a few minutes there was a crowd inside the room 
gentlemen began the rabbi i know this person there will be no writing people down called out several voices together the rabbi soon loses heart no use no use he murmurs but the maskil has got on to the table and calls out donkeys they must be written down the good of the jews at large demands it the good of the jews at large he says and he goes on to tell them that he has gone through the whole chapter with me that there is no question of a joke that i have shown him letters from the chief rabbis from which chief rabbis is the cry from the chief rabbi in paris bellows maskil from the chief rabbi in paris no other will do for him from the chief rabbi in london jews let us go home interrupted someone nishi is sure loot and the crowd dispersed as quickly as the crowd came together we three remained and the bells and the beetle who came close to me give me something he said for the day's work i gave him a few ten kopeck pieces he slipped them into his pocket without counting them and was off without saying good-bye what do you say rabbi i asked i don't know what to say how should i i am only dreadfully afraid lest it should do me harm you whom else you if you don't get any statistics it will be of no great consequence for he that keepeth israel will never slumber nor sleep i mean the two extra gulden a week the rabetzin with the large spectacles has come out from behind the stove i told you long ago she says not to interfere in the affairs of the community but when did you ever listen to me what has a rabbi to do with that sort of thing kohol's business new hush rebitson hush he answers gently you know what i am i have a soft heart it touched me but it's a pity about the two gilden a week end of section twenty six recording by linda marie nielsen bellevue washington